My first book, The Ocean Spoke to Me, was released in June of 2020. July? Was released the summer of 2020, and now that I'm working on my second manuscript, which will be released in July of 2021, I decided to read some pieces from my first book and talk about them, what I was feeling when I wrote them, and hopefully maybe inspire you to check out my book or to just, you know, allow you to listen to some pieces of writing. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is to have a number generator. So I will put in the total page number of my book and then I will generate a page number and then that is the piece that I will read and I will do three pieces and yeah, so we'll go ahead and get into it. The first number generated is page 31. So page 31 is the second page of a piece called The Released Anchor, and I will read that to you. I thought I needed you to catch me. You were the safety net set in place before the jump. The anchor dropped before the storm. You were what I could lean on when the weights of my memories got too heavy and I needed someone to carry them for me. You were there to quiet the voices when my thoughts were too loud to tell me that I was going to be okay, and that I was safe even though it felt like I was drowning in my own mind. You were the hand that pulled me from the water, the air that swept over the burns from the salt in my lungs. I relied on you to pull me out when the waters became too violent. When I left, there was no longer a safety net underneath my emotions. If I fell, there was no longer anyone there to catch me. It became sink or swim. I had to learn how to swim without you. I learned to navigate my feelings with a broken compass, a compass cracked since childhood, my ability to understand and freely express my emotions suppressed. I had to learn how to read signs written in languages I didn't understand, signs that spoke of unhealthy behaviors and red flags on roads I'd grown accustomed to getting lost on. Being without you taught me how to be there for myself. I am no longer afraid of drowning. So this piece is detailing what it was like for me after getting out of a relationship that was very unhealthy but also there were a lot of codependent behaviors that kept that relationship in place and codependent meaning that i genuinely relied on this person for my mental stability and if that other person you know we fell out or things in the relationship changed or if anything shifted, it could have a significant impact on my mental health and I genuinely didn't know how to be there for myself and to stand on my own two feet without feeling like I needed someone else to help hold me up. So this piece really attacks that codependency that I feel like I had been experiencing and had you know, projected onto other people for many years throughout my life. And like I said, when that relationship that I was in ended, it really, it was almost like, like I said, like I was being thrust into my own emotional waters and I had to learn how to swim by myself without trying to reach for a lifeboat or for a rescue boat from someone else. I needed to just be in my own waters and learn how to swim or how to get to safety on my own. And that was not something that was easy to do. Unlearning codependent behavior is really really hard and especially if you're like me and you're someone who has experienced codependency for a very long time when you get to a point in your journey where you're starting to unlearn all of those unhealthy attachments and all of those unhealthy behaviors it can be really really difficult to even just be comfortable being by yourself and like not having anyone else to rely on so it's a process of unlearning how to depend on other people unlearning how to you know reach out to other people rather than being in your own emotions and it's the process of like learning like i said how to be comfortable in your own skin and like in your own just in your own energy in general so that is what this piece is about and honestly it's one of my favorite pieces because it kind of shows the transition from that codependency to learning that independence and that sovereignty so the way that my book is set up the book is split into two parts so the title of it is the ocean spoke to me and the first half of the book is titled about you so fully the ocean spoke to me about you and it goes through like i said unlearning all of the unhealthy behaviors that i had picked up on throughout the years and from the relationship that i was in 
And then the second half of the book is The Ocean Spoke to Me About Myself. So that's when I really start to dive into the things that I'm learning, what I want to implement going forward, and just the healing process in general. So I feel like the released anchor is one of those pieces that shows that transition from being codependent and being so enamored with other people and with this relationship and starting to stand on my own two feet. The second piece, the number generated is 66. Do I want to read that one? So page 66 is the beginning of a short piece called 20 Lessons by 20, where I read off, obviously, as the title says, 20 things that I learned by the time that I turned 20. And this list is very personal to me. Like I said, it, this isn't like an objective list of like things you should know by the time you turn 20. They're just things that along my journey and in my personal experience, I found to be really significant to me. And like I said, the journey that I wanted to head on going forward. So I will actually read those 20 things to you. Number one, listen to your intuition. It's your compass in this life. Ignoring it could bring about some situations that could have been avoided. And listening to it could lead you to some wonderful experiences. Always listen. It knows. Number two, passions require patience. Manifested desires don't just fall from the sky. Work, time, and effort have to be put in to make dreams a reality. It takes time. If you really want it, be prepared to put in effort and to wait. The flower doesn't come forth from the seed in one day. Number three, there will always be people that don't see the vision or feel things the same as you do. That's okay. Keep going through the adversity and only pay attention to and surround yourself with those that believe in you. Number four, relationships should add to your life, not subtract from it all relationships, not just romantic ones. Number five, capitalism is deeply ingrained into us from a young age in America. Buy consciously. Think if you really need it or want it before you swipe. Only purchase items you genuinely love, or try to at least. Number six, being small and striving to be small doesn't make you beautiful. Skipping meals doesn't make you happy. Purging doesn't nourish you. Hating yourself doesn't inspire you. Some kind of way the universe pulled all of your atoms together to create you so you could experience this life. Don't waste it trying to shrink yourself. You're more than that. Number seven, spend quality time with your mom for a lot of reasons. Number eight, say no when you want to. Don't want to go? Say no. Don't agree with what you're being asked? Say no. Don't say yes when you want to say no. You're doing a disservice to yourself. Number nine, there's no rush. Society is always in go mode, but it doesn't have to be that way. Don't be afraid to slow down. Your goals are still obtainable, even if you're not constantly exhausting yourself over them. Number 10. I am not responsible for the actions, decisions, or thoughts of others. What others decide to do in their lives and their relationship with you is not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of them. Don't shift the blame onto yourself. You can only control your behavior. Number 11. Being introverted doesn't mean you have no friends. It just means you strive to have the right friends. You don't have to settle for unfulfilling relationships. There's nothing wrong with being particular about who you spend your time with. Number 12, music can genuinely be there for you. Listening to an album all the way through at 1 a.m. when you're feeling existential and lonely helps. Trust me. Number 13, your perspective is really significant to how you experience life. What you continuously place your attention, time, and focus onto will be what you continuously see. Shifting your perspective really does shift your direct experience of life. Number 14. All types of discrimination are human constructs and add no value to the experience of life. It's all pointless. We all exist together on this strange floating rock orbiting around the sun as it moves through space. Hating someone based on stereotypes, sexuality, skin color, or any other reason you could decide to hate a group of people doesn't matter in the big picture of things. You'll waste a lot of your life sitting in hate when you could be directing that energy towards something that's meaningful. And in that same breath, there are many that won't agree with or understand that. Number 15, get the tattoo. Don't be afraid, just go get it. Contrary to popular sayings, you won't regret it. Choose an artist you like, listen to their advice, and you'll be more than fine. Number 16, cleaning is a mood booster. Sometimes when you're feeling down, cleaning your bathroom or your bedroom helps. It's a distraction, it gives you something else to focus on, and having a clean living space does have an effect on your mood. Number 17, pay attention to your dreams. There are messages in them. Number 18, 
You don't have to have casual sex if you don't want to. Don't feel pressured by society. You don't have to have sex at all if you're not ready or don't want to. Once again, don't feel pressured by anyone or anything. Number 19. Moving on is hard, but continuing means moving towards better things. What is meant for you will be for you. Let things go that aren't. Number 20. Do whatever makes you genuinely happy. You are alive for you, your journey and experience first and foremost. If you're going to be on this confusing, contradicting, wonderful, weird planet, then you might as well have a good time. So I think all of these are pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, these are just 20 things that I found had meaning to me uh, throughout my journey and I wanted to share them in my book. So I did. The last number, very fitting, the last number that I have generated for this third piece that I will be sharing with you from my book is page three. So page three is actually the first piece that is in my book. And like I said, my book is split in halves about you and about myself. And page three is the first piece in the about you section. It is titled Don't Move. So I will read that to you now. Desiring you was synonymous with desiring death. The desire always brought with it the organization of funerals you'd never attend for the expectations and promises that were made to me. It always brought with it the throwing of dead roses on words as empty as the casket your affection for me laid in. I can't bury something that was never alive. I saw revival as a promise of things to come rather than a lesson in death. I would bury you only for you to rise from the dirt as if nothing had happened, clean, unfazed. You would revive yourself, and I would help you. You would return, but you would never promise that things would change. I'm tired of being the only one with dirt on my hands, the only one to mourn. You no longer have to promise that things have changed because they have. I have. My perspective of myself, my desires, everything has changed. I no longer want to organize funerals for things I didn't kill. There is no longer romance to be found in the movement of the tombstone, in the return. If you are continuously leaving, leaving wounds, leaving promises, leaving me, where is the purpose in convincing you to stay when you're tugging against reins I never placed you in? You are allowed to leave. You are allowed to go. You are allowed to change, just as I have. In the process of wiping away the dirt, I realized I deserve to be loved. I deserve to share love. I deserve to feel happiness, to feel peace, to feel inspired, to learn. I deserve a love that doesn't keep reviving after death as a way to prove itself. I no longer want parts of myself to continue dying with you. I want to grow in love. I want to ascend in love. I want to transform in love. I want to become the best version of myself in love. Yet my feet feel planted as if I'm still standing before our tombstone, waiting. As always, before I can muster the courage to move, there it is subtle but undeniable movement so this piece a little heavy to read this now because like i said like this book was released in the summer of 2020 and i am working on another manuscript that will be released in july of 2021 so i as a writer i think after i write these pieces and i get my feelings or my thoughts out i tend to flow away from them or like I tend to move on from them and I haven't read any of these pieces from my book in a really long time so to read this one in particular it creates a really weird past life sensation almost like I can't resonate with this anymore even though I know what I'm talking about like emotionally I don't resonate with these feelings anymore so it's it's very strange to read them but Again, as I said, I was in a relationship that was very unhealthy, and once I got out of that relationship, it just almost sparked this urge to write everything down and to express myself through writing. And so a lot of the healing process that I did, it came about through the process of writing my first book. And this particular piece being the opener of the book, I think it really sets the tone for the about you section. And I think it lets the reader know immediately that the about you, the you that I am speaking about, isn't necessarily a loving, happy you relationship. It is something that was unhealthy. It was something that was dragging me down. It was something heavy. So this piece within itself, I think if you listen to it, you 
you know, have an idea of what I'm essentially expressing, but to say it in plain terms, it was an on and off again relationship. And I think if you have been in an on and off relationship, whether it was with a romantic partner, or even with a family member or a coworker, however the relationship may have come about in your reality, I think you know what it feels like to get ready to like leave the relationship and you're ready to move on. And then something or they themselves tug you back. And it's almost like this, you start to leave and then you can. And so then there's this energy of regression and starting the cycle all over again. So that's essentially what don't move is about is that cyclical energy of trying to leave, but then not being able to, and then being pulled back into the situation that you know is not healthy for you. So yeah. Like I said, I, it's hard for me to like read these and like fully immerse myself back in them because I'm no longer in that energy, but that is what the don't move piece is about. So yeah, those are three pieces from my first self-published book, The Ocean Spoke to Me. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like letting me know that either one of these pieces resonated with you or you just found this video sort of entertaining in some way. The link to purchase my book will be in the description along with my Instagram handles and my gratitude and manifestation journals if you would like to check those out. And I thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes of your day with me and I hope you have a great rest of your week.